I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. Good morning and welcome to today's craftwine.org webinar, um, Building a New Future on Secure Ground with the Export Import Bank of the U.S. Government. So before we begin, I want to review a few of the features. Uh, well, please make sure that your speakers are enabled. Uh, there's uh, enable your pop-ups. There, pop there may be some blockage if the pop-ups aren't enabled. There's a help button below. It looks like a little question mark. The really important thing about this is it's designed to be interactive. At the bottom of your screen, there's a row of tools and buttons. Take a look there for a moment. Do you see the question, the little question mark? That's where you can get some help. Some Q&A, uh, there's also a chat down there. You see the, the Q&A chat. Uh, this is really meant to be interactive, and so I encourage you, as you've got questions as we go along, just type them in. We'll answer them at the end. We really want to have a conversation about this. This is not meant to be us just talking to you. Um, the slides will advance automatically through the event, and after the presentation, we'll be sending you a link to download the slides. Lastly, if you're experiencing any technical difficulties at all, click on the question mark, the help icon found at the bottom of your screen. You can also type it in the Q&A, and we're happy to help with anything that you would like. So um, again, this is meant to be interactive. Speakers off, be sure to ask questions, and you'll get a copy of the slides emailed to you. So my name is Carol Lawson, and I am the CEO and the founder of the Craft Wine Association. Uh, we are a membership organization. We're on a mission to make craft wine as available in the marketplace as craft beer and spirit. And that's not just restaurants, that's not just retail, that's not just direct to consumer. It's really in every way possible, even things you haven't thought about. That's why this partnership with the Exxon Bank is so important. So um, enough about me. We're here to introduce and to speak to Elizabeth Thomas. She's the Business Development Specialist of the XM Bank, and I'll let her take it over from here. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. My name is Elizabeth Thomas. I'm a Business Development Specialist with the Export-Import Bank of the U.S., and we'll talk in a few minutes about what XM, as we're known, is. Just to give you a very brief uh, couple of sentences about my background, I've been with the federal government for four years. My job is outreach and education. I work with groups and uh, companies, particularly small businesses, who would like to learn about exporting and how to export and how to build a successful export strategy, or who maybe have already dabbled in exporting and want to know how to expand their export business. Uh, when I started my career, many years ago, I worked for Hewlett Packard Company, which many of you know is headquartered in Palo Alto, California. And through that experience, I ended up spending a lot of time in California and visiting wineries was part of the DNA when you worked for HP in those days. So I've spent many happy hours at wineries of all sizes in the US, in Australia, in Chile, and in other places around the world. So I'm very excited about talking with you all today. The first thing we're gonna do this morning is um, take a poll. And um, there's no right answer. So you can see there's five, five answers to choose from. So if you could just click on one of the buttons and let me know if you are currently exporting, if you are, what your uh, export volume is, or if you're not exporting. And again, there's no right answer. This is really just to give me an understanding of who's in the audience so we can make sure that we're gearing our, um, our messages appropriately. So I'm gonna be quiet here for about two seconds and then we'll look at the results. Great, thank you. So this is very, very helpful. Um, so we will talk a lot about um, how you get started with exporting. And we're going to do one more poll question now. If you could please uh, let me know what terms of payment you're currently using. And again, there's no, it's all over the map. There's no, no right or wrong answer. We're going to talk about terms of payment um, as we get into the heart of the presentation. And again, I'm just going to be quiet for about two seconds here. Okay, there we go. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And um, we're going to talk about a lot about open account today. But before we do that, let's talk about why exporting. 
So there are a lot of reasons to export. I think about it in terms of diversifying. So financial advisors always talk about diversifying your, port your stock portfolio. And exporting can be thought of the same way. Hedge your bets by selling into more than one market. Some of the other reasons to think about it, in addition to uh, diversification, is that 95% of the world's buying power resides outside of the U.S. I was really surprised when I first read the statistic because we're such a monolithic uh, market, you know, 350 million people and so large. I was really surprised um, to learn that 95% of the buying power actually resides outside of our country. The Department of Commerce does a lot of statistical work on this. And one of the things, a couple of the things that they found is that companies that export are actually 17% more profitable. They tend to be worth more. We do a lot of work with small manufacturing companies who perhaps want to sell their business one day. And so, you know, increasing their worth is very important to them. Uh, and also, we've learned that companies that export, in the process of exporting, usually tighten up their internal controls and they end up running themselves more efficiently. Another reason to export is that it smooths uh, seasonality. So when it's summer in the U.S., it's winter in Australia. So if, you, if you're uh, experiencing seasonality with your sales, there can be markets that can help smooth that out. The National Association of Small Businesses conducts a, an exporting survey every two years. And the results are amazingly consistent about why small businesses hesitate to export. And the top three reasons are, people ask, is there a market for my product? Will I get paid? And how do I get started? So we're going to talk about each of these in the course of our discussion this afternoon. But first, let's look at a couple of other exporting myths and see if we can dispel those myths. So the first one is, we talked about this, my domestic market is good, so I don't need to export. Well, the market may be good today, but gosh, everyone, we all know, um, especially since 2007, 2008, things can turn very quickly and markets can become very vari variable. A lot of people worry that my business is too small. So 42% of small business exporters have 19 employees or fewer. Exporting is too risky. What if I don't get paid? Uh, there are solutions that protect you against non-payment by foreign buyers, and that's going to be the meat of our discussion today. And then finally, exporting, getting started is difficult. Well, call us. That's what we're here to do. And we work very closely with other federal government agencies that are also here to help you. And we can, if, if we're not the right person, you call us anyway, and we'll get you directed to the right spot. Let's talk a minute about the main beer box. And this is a thing of beauty. In 2017, a fellow by the name of Sean Sullivan, who's with the Maine Brewers Guild, came up with the idea to create the world's largest mobile kegerator. What you see on the left there is a 40-foot refrigerated shipping container with 78 beer taps inside that can hold 400 kegs of beer. And what happens is it travels by land or by sea, and when it gets to its destination, the sides open up and you have a pop-up uh, tap room. Now, this has been amazing for main breweries. So craft breweries, um, they started out with eight of them who had never exported before, uh, took a, a leap of faith and sent their um, beer overseas to Iceland, to a festival in Iceland. And since then, it was so successful, since then they've expanded into exporting to Canada and the UK. Um, they're planning virtual beer tastings now because of the pandemic in countries throughout Europe and Asia. And when I say they took a leap of faith, I mean, what they did is they put their beer in and they shipped it over, understanding that they'd be paid. You all know what open account terms are. This is just open account terms with a foreign buyer. Um, so it was a leap of faith that they would get paid. Where Exum came in is we actually help protect companies against non-payment by foreign buyers. So it was more of a little jump than a huge leap of faith. A little bit about who we are. We are a U.S. federal government agency, and our job is to help grow American jobs by helping companies uh, grow their revenue streams through exporting. We were established in 1934, headquartered in Washington, D.C. If any of you have been watching the TV the last couple of days, you might have seen our building. Uh, we have offices nationwide, local offices, with folks who are there to help you, and we support all U.S.-based companies that export. The way that we help you is that we help you be more competitive by enabling open account credit terms to international buyers while reducing the risk of not getting paid. Uh, we help provide access to liquidity 
so you can build your export business. And this doesn't, may not apply so much to our audience today, but um, for those companies that manufacture capital equipment, expensive capital equipment that needs five-year or seven-year repayment terms, we help with actually, actually help find financing for the foreign buyers. We are, however, primarily small business focused. 90% uh, 90 90 of what we do, our transactions, are with small businesses. No company and no transaction is too small. If you've got one employee, if you are it, that's great. Uh, if you've got a sale of a couple of thousand dollars, we can, we can work with you. So we, a lot of people hesitate. They're afraid their company's too small. There is no such thing for us. So let's look at sales terms um, in terms of spectrum of risk. And again, you already, you, most of you already are selling on open account terms for your domestic customers. So you know, you know cash is king. Take it all day long if you can get it. But you also know that your customers, your international customers, like your domestic customers, are going to ask for open account um, credit terms. The, the key, the, the trick is that if you are selling an open account credit terms to somebody overseas, somebody calls you up and says, I want to buy $30,000 worth of your wine, and you're going to give them 60 days to pay, now the risk is entirely on you because you've just sent $30,000 worth of wine eight or 12,000 miles away. If that buyer doesn't sell, your ability to collect on that is really small because it's very expensive. You've got to go hire a local attorney. You're going to go flying over to you know, wherever it happened. I mean, it's likely that if you sell to someone on open account credit terms and they don't pay, that that's going to be a financial loss for you. So the way to protect yourself from that loss is with something called export credit insurance. Export credit insurance is an insurance policy, just like you have an insurance policy on your house or in your car. And in this case, we're insuring the receivable that's created when you sell to an international customer on open account credit terms. So it does three things for you. It enables you to be more competitive by offering the open account credit terms, which your buyers are likely to require anyway. It protects you against non-payment on the receivable that's generated in an international sale when you sell on open account credit terms. And it also enables you to have access to financing. So you've got this $30,000 order, you need more bottles, or you need more people, uh, you need something else. Um, you can actually add, if, you, if your receivables are insured, they will become part of your borrowing base, and that gives you access to additional cash. So let's take a look at one specific example. So Express Insurance is the name of one of the policies that XM offers. Let's say you sell to a foreign buyer on 60 days open account. The premium for this particular type of policy for everybody, no matter where you're selling, is 65 cents for every $100 of the gross value of the invoice. The invoice is covered up to 95%. So on your $30,000 sale, $28,500 is covered for a premium of $195. So this balances out the risk reward. Now you're selling to international buyers on open account credit terms, but you're not doing it on the hope or on the faith that they're going to pay. Of course, we still want you to pay. That's our, first, that's our first choice. But if they don't pay, you file a claim with us, the same way you would file a claim on, a, on your car or if you have something go wrong at home, and we cover that up to 95%. The kinds of risks we cover are if somebody goes bankrupt, they're insolvent, if there's protracted default, uh, in the case of war, re revolution, or insurgency, um, currency transfer. So if so, you're waiting to get paid in U.S. dollars. If the country that you're selling to suddenly shuts the door and says we're not letting U.S. dollars out of the country anymore, you're covered for that risk. And you're also covered for a risk of an import or export license. Meaning, let's say you were selling to um, a country overseas, and that country said we're no longer going to import wine. There's no no more imports of wine for the U.S. Not allowed. And you had your $30,000 shipment was already in the air or on the ship or however it was going overseas, you're covered for that loss. And the reverse is that the US says, we're no longer going to allow US wine to be exported. The door is shut and you've got something that's on its way, you're covered for that loss as well. There is some eligibility criteria. Um, we do like uh, companies to be in business for one year. 
None of these are really cast in concrete, except for the second one. Um, you know, a lot of people work for a company or a winery or someplace, and then they leave to open their own. We take all of that experience into account. We do require that your company, your winery, has a DUNS number. This is a, um, done by a service by Dun & Bradstreet. They collect information on um, companies. They assign you a nine-digit number that's just for your company. They collect information on you, and that information is available to potential creditors. When you get the slides, when you actually receive the slides, that DUNS Dun number is a hyperlink, and it will take you to a short blog that explains what a DUNS number is and how to get one. We, have, we can only support products that have um, greater than 50% U.S. content, which includes labor and overhead, but not markup. I'm assuming in your case, you have almost 100% content. Sadly, um, we can't support any sales to foreign militaries or to defense-related um, institutions. So if you're selling wine to the, the French army, unfortunately, that's something that we could not cover. There are about 196 countries in the world uh, we are open in 180 of them, um, and the entire list of countries where we are open is on our website. And then finally, the product has to ship from the U.S. So sometimes, mostly with manufacturers, someone will call me and say, I got a manufacturing plant in Brazil. I want to ship from there to Vietnam. That's great, but that's not something we can cover because it has, the goods have to ship from the U.S. The second part of what we do that's um, most important for you is a working capital loan guarantee. This is a loan that you get from your commercial bank. So you go to your bank, you need to uh, borrow some money for export related issues. Maybe the bank's a little concerned about a risk factor. They can actually come to, they can actually, um, come to Exum and get a guarantee. And that guarantee is that if you default for any reason on your loan, Exum will guarantee up to 90% of the value of the loan. There's no minimum or maximum. Um, your work in process is included in your borrowing base. And again, this doesn't apply to wineries, I imagine, but for people in the service industries, uh, the use of funds can include collateralizing a bid or performance bond. And I just want to say this again, because there's a lot, there tends to be a lot of confusion about this when people are learning for the first time. Um, if you're interested in working capital loan guarantees, first thing to do is to call your lender and talk to your bank about it. And if they have any questions, they certainly can call us. One of the keys to making the um, main beer box um, so successful, and you know, the, the, the economics on craft beer are somewhat difficult, as I understand the economics on um, craft wines are as well. And so they really, you know, they needed this to be successful. And one of the keys to success was that um, the Maine Brewers Guild worked with what's called a U.S. Export Assistance Center. It's shortened to be USIAC because we're the federal government and we like to do that. Um, so these USIACs are one-stop shopping. It's professionals from the Department of Commerce, professionals from the Small Business Administration, and then professionals from my organization, XM. And the reason this is so important is because these three organizations help you with different steps of the exporting process all along the way. So the first question we talked about at the beginning of the presentation, is there a market for my product? Well, the perfect answer for that is the U.S. Department of Commerce. They have a number of products to help you determine whether there is a market or which market is the best market for your product. One of them I'm just going to talk, touch on very briefly is called a gold key matching service. And the Gold Key Matching Service is a, a program where the Department of Commerce will talk with you about which markets you're interested in. They'll call their local people in that market. Let's just say, I'm just going to say South Korea. They'll call people in South Korea and say, hey, we've got this winery. They want to come over. Um, they want to talk to three potential distributors or five potential distributors. Who have you got? And the person in country will go out and actually line up the appointments for you. In the process of lining up appointments, they will go out and visit every one of these companies at their place of business because they want to make sure they're real. And then, you know, you'll fly over, you'll meet the Department of Commerce person, and they will go with you on these appointments. And it's just a terrific way to meet face-to-face -face with potential distributors or buyers. It's, it's a great program. Um, there is a cost associated with that, but I'm going to talk in a minute about how you can mitigate the cost of that. 
Uh, the second organization, that federal government agency, and we're three separate agencies sitting in one office together. The second agency is the Small Business Administration. And again, they have a number of great programs to help you assess your, your export readiness. Um, they are affiliated with universities who have students, graduate students usually, and led by a trade professional who's been in the business for many years that can help you write your export plans. They also have something called a STEP loan. And these are loans that the Small Business Administration gives your local economic development agency. And these loans can be used for things like going overseas with the Department of Commerce on a gold key matching service. So it can be used to pay your airfare, your, your, um, your hotel rooms, all the expenses associated with your trip. They have a different set of loans that can help you become export ready. You can use it to optimize your website for international sales. So a very important partner in the exporting process. And then we're there, and we're there with the two things I just talked about, the export credit insurance that ensures those foreign receivables that are generated when you make an open account sale to an international buyer, and then the working capital loan guarantee to make sure that you have the funds to build your products for export. These are our local offices. Um, you will have my contact information when you get the slides. You are welcome to call one of our local offices. You're always welcome to um, call me, and I'll help get you pointed in the right direction. So with that, I'm going to pause for a minute and um, see if Carol or Shannon, we have any questions from the audience. So um, the email invitation stated assistance with international mat matchmaking. I don't see the specific information. Can you point to the place on the webinar where that is? Sure. There's something called the Gold Key Matching Service, which is on slides on the slide about the U.S. Export Assistance Center, the USIAC. It is a service from the U.S. Department of Commerce. Uh, and if you like, we can send you information and links directly to that information. And if you let us know where you are geographically, we can connect you with your local uh, Department of Commerce office as well. So I have a question. Actually, this is Carol with the craftline.org. Mm -hmm. Can you speak a little bit about the main bear box and shipping and how that relates, say, to shipping across the U.S. or shipping to the U.K.? Absolutely. When I was talking to uh, one of the folks involved with Maine Beer Box, I, was, I asked him, I said, what advice would you have? You know, I'm talking to these folks in the craft wine industry. What advice would you have for them? And he said, well, he said, you got to pick your more profitable markets. And then he said, which was interesting to me, he said, you know, for our wineries in Maine, it's cheaper for us to ship to the UK than it is to ship to California. So it's easier and it's cheaper and it has become a more profitable market for them actually than some places domestically. That's pretty amazing. So I want to encourage questions. Um, there is a Q&A box in the upper right hand corner. Any questions that you've got, we really want to uh, address as much as we can. Carol, can I say a couple um, of other things about the main beer box just oh, very sure. quickly? So we talked about um, that exporting can help smooth out your seasonality. Um, January is a very off month for breweries in Maine. As you can imagine, it's cold, it's snowy, not a lot of tourists up there. Um, except four or five main breweries, at least five at the moment, are going to be shipping to the UK in January on the uh, main beer box. So there's an example of how you know, being involved in exporting can help generate smooth revenues throughout the year. So a question for you, Elizabeth. Um, what if I want to increase the credit limit extended to my buyer? Is that possible? Absolutely. Um, when you apply to Exim Bank, you give us a couple of pieces of information. You tell us who your buyer is. You tell us how much credit you want to extend to them. And you tell us how many days you want to give them, 30, 60, 90. So I want to give them, you know, $100,000 for, or even smaller, whatever. Any, I want to give them $30,000 for 60 days. And we will come back to you and we'll say, yeah, we, we've done our homework. And as a matter of fact, if you wanted to give them 100, you could. So we'll give you a limit of 100. And you can sell it to them for 60 days. That's great. Or 
based on the information we have about your buyer, we might come back to you and say, mm, we feel more comfortable $15,000 at 30 days. Or, and this has happened, and we've saved people a lot of heartache, we might come back to you and say, we cannot cover this buyer. Now, we're not allowed to tell you why we can't cover this buyer, but that's a very important piece of information for you. If I were in your shoes and I received that information, I would see a couple of choices. One is maybe not do business with that person, or maybe if I do business, make sure I get cash in advance for that person. Once you have a credit limit in place for a particular buyer, and the credit limits can be different for different buyers, once you have a credit limit in place, um, you can always reach out to uh, your Exxon registered broker who will talk with us about increasing that credit limit. That's wonderful. Okay, so we have another question. Typically, how many cases of how many cases of wine does a small mom and pop winery export? And does it matter? It doesn't matter. It, it really, it doesn't matter. So we, we we will do deals. You know, you've got a deal of a couple of thousand dollars. We will cover that that deal for you. It's no no company is too small. No deal is too small. So we will be happy to cover. If you want to try it, you want to try, you know, a couple cases, you want to dip your toe in, um, you fill out the application with our help. Again, we do the underwriting on your buyers, and um, we will provide the insurance for those receivables. Are there any studies that have been done regarding which markets are the most receptive or profitable to wine export? Uh, I don't know if there have specifically. That probably is a great question for our friends at the um, at the Department of Commerce. They do a couple of things. Uh, they have a they have a website. It's almost too full of information. It can be a little overwhelming, which is why we suggest you yes. work with someone to help you through it. But um, they have information on by by market. What is the top? What what does this market want to import? They have information by industries. What are the best markets for this industry? And another um, great resource, and again, I don't want to overwhelm you with resources, so call us so we can help you, is uh, the U.S. Census Bureau has a website that will tell you every country and what their top imports are. So All right, um, thank another you. question that we mm – -hmm. oh, are we timed? No, no, All no. Right, I so, just see that somebody um, has popped up the poll question. Oh, Okay. Well, one last question before we head to the poll. Are there different protocols involved in working with trading house companies versus traditional exporters? And if so, does your program offer insurance for these situations? Okay, so this I is have also to, one we can Carol, take offline. Yeah, maybe you can help me out. I'm not sure what, what a trade, what was the term, a trading? Trading house. Oh, so let's answer this one offline um, because yeah. it can be okay. quite involved. And okay. let's head to the poll. Okay, well, this is a, just a very simple poll. Um, if you would like to be contacted by someone uh, from XM to talk more about exporting, just click, you can, you click yes there. You can also click um, to be contacted by the Craft Wine Organization, and um, we'd be happy to help you out at any time. Do we have any other questions, uh, Carol, while we're working on the poll? So let me get back to that. Uh, one question is, how long does it take to receive a quote on an XM policy? Yeah. Yep. So um, we, we, it takes about uh, 10 days or so. Uh, it has been done as quickly as 24 hours. Um, in the current circumstances, as you can imagine, there's a lot going on. A lot of people are looking at exporting to um, try to help recover from some of the things that are happening due to the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so we're running about 10 days. It has been done as quickly as 24 hours, and we've had people who started shipping right after that. But um, use 10 days as a rule of thumb. And Great. just to, Thank the you application very much. process, sure, if I can just comment, the application process is three pages. Uh, it's very simple. And again, we've got local people who can help walk you through it. Or we can connect you with an Exum registered broker. I, so I've referred to an Exum registered broker. These are insurance brokers who uh, you can come to us directly for the policy. You can work with them. We encourage people to work with brokers because they kind of help you through your day-to-day -day operations with it. Um, and if you like, and, and you do not pay them anything. They are paid by Exum Bank. So it's a free service to you for the life of your, of your policy. 
Um, and so that's a service that we offer you as well. And I'd like to flip in one last question, and that is who normally mm -hmm. pays for the shipping? Who, so would, that, who would normally that, pay for the shipping? Sorry. Right. So, so, I mean, that's a question between you and your, your, um, your buyer, but what you could do, of course, you know, put it on your invoice. And the other thing you can do is you can include the price of your insurance in your invoice, not as a line item. You don't want that, right? But you include it in your markup. So if you're paying that extra, hundred, let's say it's your $30,000 sale and you're paying that extra $195, you might want to include that in the price of your, your goods. Cool. So another one is, is end to end, what does the XM application process look like? Right. It's a three-page application. Um, you can actually go online on our web website, which is xm.gov, and you can find it there. You can reach out to your local um, to your local XM rep who can help you with it. We also have the list by state of XM registered insurance brokers. And this is their job is to help you with the application process and to talk with you about your specific requirements. Make sure you get the correct type, steer you to the correct type of policy. And you do not pay them at all. Exum pays the brokers. So it's a service that's free to you. Cool. Oh, all right, here's another question. In general, I find wine distrib distributors overseas high compared to wine prices from, from other regions like Chile, Argentina, that sort of thing. Is this so? And how are those prices set? Yeah, that's, that's an industry question that I, I just don't have the background or to, to answer. I, you know, my, I'm a trade finance specialist. I just, I don't have that kind of knowledge about the, um, your, your industry to really address that. Yeah. And, yeah, and I'll answer this one. Um, and that is, you set your prices when you negotiate your deal. You're not bound to the prices that you have listed in your tasting room or um, what you sell in the U.S. That what you're selling overseas, your pricing can be higher or lower depending upon the deal that you strike and the needs that you have. Uh, they're asking for data comparison on domestic and wholesale. I will do my best to dig that up and send that out. I don't have that in front of me right now. We just talked a little bit about um, introduction to uh, international buyers. Can you go through one more time how that works, that group of three in the office? Yes. So um, there, is, there are offices called U.S. Export Assistance Centers. Um, the the, the um, acronym is USEAC, pronounced USEAC. And these are offices where you have representatives from the Department of Commerce, from the Small Business Administration, and from XM, the organization I work for. They all work together. And we call it one-stop shopping. When you walk in, you can meet with all three people at one time. And the Department of Commerce can explain to you the different products and services that they have to specifically help you find overseas buyers. And one of those services is called the Gold Key Matching Service. And it's where um, the, your local Department of Commerce person speaks to a Depart Department of Commerce employee in the local country. Let's say we used South Korea, I think, in our example earlier. And that Department of Commerce person actually goes out in South Korea and sets up appointments for you with three to five uh, potential distributors. You fly over, Department of Commerce person takes you to meet those distributors, and hopefully you find one or more buyer among them. The next and that's question when you I receive have, the, you kind of, when, Go ahead. I'm sorry, Carol. I was just gonna say, when you receive the, the slides, you'll see this on slide number 20. The next question is, do you cover importing also? And if so, can you give a brief description of that? Yeah, so I, this is my old joke. Um, so we are called the M Export Import Bank of the U.S., except where we cover exports only, we don't cover imports, and we're not a bank. But other than that, it's a great name. So, and, so we, don't, uh, we don't do anything with – yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, because our mission is to support uh, U.S.-based jobs, we cover exporting only and not importing. Okay. 
Um, I think that's it for the questions that we have. If there's anyone else who wants to jump in really quickly, we're happy to answer any questions you have. So, um, did you want to get to the poll question, uh, look at the poll question one more time before we oh. close out? Yep, there we go. So I'm, I'm showing, I can see it on my screen if you can see it on yours. Okay. Yep, Great. sorry, so I had folks, the chat box up. There you go. So feel free if you like to, um, to answer the last poll question. We're not going to show the results on the screen, but feel free to, um, to answer the last poll question. And uh, I'll be quiet for two seconds and then we'll move on to our final slide. All right. So Carol, it's back to you. Yeah, so I, Elizabeth, thank you very much. Um, I know a lot of this is new to many of the wineries that are listening in, but we believe at, at craftwine.org that it's important to take a look at everything that's available for you as small producers. And a couple of things I want to reiterate. First of all, it, nothing is too small. As Elizabeth was talking about, even a couple cases is fine. So you don't have to worry that you're too small. You've got help and protection in these resource centers that are available to you. Um, we have some experience and I'm going to be reaching out to the main beer box to see if they can share their story with us as well. And I also want to encourage you, if you have any questions or looking for any insight, contact the Exxon Bank or contact Craft Wine Org and we'll get your question to the right person so you can get it answered. We may not have the answer ourselves, but we're happy. We're very happy to help you out and get the answers that you need. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, this presentation will be sent to you in a thank you email with a link to the presentation so you can review it again. And we really appreciate your time. Thank you.